I'm not one of these people that imagined through my life that I would always work for Disney. I grew up around movies and sets because of my dad, but I grew up here in Hawaii, so I never went to Disneyland or anything like that until I was like 12 years old when we moved to California. So my appreciation for Disneyland was already modeled by an appreciation of the fact that it was scenic art when I went to Disneyland. Um, but really, I imagined I would do something else. I was sort of recruited uh, during that Epcot age to come in and work on models. One of the executives had seen some of my set design work. The young man, you should work for Walt Disney Imagineering. And I was like, why in the world would they ever hire me? I, you know, I have long hair, I look like a hippie, you know, blah, blah, blah. But they did, they did. Uh, so I started working in the model shop and it took me a while to find my niche uh, at Imagineering. But once I did, I really was able to blossom into a designer with something to say and offer something to the company, you know, that has, has led to some really interesting projects. I kind of learned to paint, painting big theatrical scenic backdrops. Even to this day, my paintings are best viewed kind of at a big distance because, you know, the tighter they get, the stiffer they get. So when you paint for distance, you're painting for the illusion. Um, so I tend to prefer painting really big. Okay. Have you uh, done any murals around here? You know, I, I assisted a little bit on this mural that's in here. Uh, by the way, this mural is by a very interesting character. This guy taught me to draw when I was about four years old. When you were four? Yeah. This man who did this mural, uh, Martin Charlot, is the son of Jean Charlot. Jean Charlot is a very important artist to Disney and a very important artist to Hawaii. Um, and they were friends of our family uh, when we lived here. And so I spent a lot of time in the Charlot house and Martin, the son of Jean, kind of taught me to draw when I was just a little kid. So um, we hired him to do this mural um, and I ended up in here kind of assisting on little details and stuff on this mural by the guy who taught me to draw. It's wonderful. Yeah, it's kind of cool. So what was the, the delay or the break between when he first started teaching you Oh my God, 50 years or something, right? This. Yeah, yeah, like 50 years. Um, yeah, it's a funny thing, right? Um, I, I, I do think art, art is kind of a, a process of discovery, right? You sort of learn, not learn as you go, but the art emerges as you do it. And so to have that artistic temperament coming to a project like Aulani, which is sort of emerging as we do it. You know what I mean? It, it was really well suited. I loved working with all these artists. I mean, one of the best things about me being an artist was the ability to have a really professional kind of conversation with all these other artists. Almost all the artists are from Oahu. Uh, uh, and almost all the artists are from Hawaii. Now, Martin Charlot, who is from Hawaii, um, actually lives now uh, not very far from Walt Disney Imagineering. He's got medical conditions and he lives on the mainland, but he is part of the art tradition of, of Oahu and of Hawaii. Most all of the other artists are from this island. A few of them are from other islands. For example, the sculptor who did these big figures that are here in the lobby is from uh, the island of Hawaii, what they call the big island. But for the most part, they're all local. For the most part, for the most part, these artists are local artists, meaning they're from Oahu or they're from Hawaii. I would say half of them are indigenous Hawaiians, have Hawaiian ancestors. Um, and their, their contributions were, for the most part, unedited by ourselves. You know, we wanted them to say what they wanted to say through their art um, and make this place be filled with that art that has something to say. One of the things about Hawaii, real Hawaii, not make-believe, you know, coconut bra Hawaii, real Hawaii, um, is that things are done with purpose. One of the things the Hawaiians would always ask us when we were about to embark on something is, what's your purpose in doing this? What are you trying to do? It's a very, um, in a sense, professional way of thinking about what you're doing. So I think there's something inherent in Hawaiian culture, multiple things inherent in Hawaiian culture that are pertinent to groups of people
who are coming together to assemble for a brief period to kind of get something done, right? There's this atmosphere of purposefulness, and since it's part of the culture, you could almost use Aulani itself as a whole series of examples of these ideas that are Hawaiian ideas, uh, living and working together, cooperating towards a common goal, doing things with purpose, doing things to a very high level of quality and finish. And it seems to me these cultural thematic ideas are really appropriate to a business group coming together to talk about something they need to accomplish. It's sort of funny because it doesn't exactly, when you build something like this, it's not so much like, here's our plan and now we're going to do it. Not like this. This is much more a blended emerging design that happens as you do it. I mean, obviously we have the rooms, we know we're going to do that. We've got the lobby, we know we're going to do that. But what you see with your eyeballs, what you experience as the sense of being here, all that is coming together in a very dynamic way as we're doing the work. So you don't have time for a very long period of investment in something that's not going to happen because you're doing it. You know, one thing we just naturally do at Imagineering is everything we do is based on story. We build our entire work process around story. And that's not just kind of a clever thing that you say. Human beings, all human beings, are wired for story. It is one of the things that makes us human. It's what our brains do. So when you organize around story, both organizationally and in terms of the product that you're producing, it's this incredible lubricant towards getting things done because the human brain itself is already a story machine. So it's a very easy way to put together information to get humans to understand it, both getting it done and when it's done, what it is. So it's a very Disney thing to do, but it actually has this very universal, broad application in terms of how to organize, how to communicate, how to evaluate. Uh, if you know the story you're trying to tell, it makes it really easy to know whether is it choice A or choice B. Is this good or bad? Does it match or not match what we're trying to say? A lot of times people jump past why am I making a statement? Why am I taking action? And they jump right to the action, right? And now they're stuck evaluating what they're doing on the basis of its present value alone. Well, is this one cheaper? Is this one more expensive? Is that one easier? Is this one more difficult? But no one ever took the time to say, why did we start? What are we trying to say? What is the story of our effort to get this done? Why are we here? That's what we do. And that makes it much easier for us later when someone has to decide, you want that lighting fixture or that one? You know, oh, well, I want that one because that one says why we're here, right? You have to cut something. You can't afford three of these things. Which one do you cut? Well, I cut that one because that one the least says why we're here. It's really easy as you go down the line to do it. And I think that is something we could teach the world of organization uh, that is a very Disney way of behaving.